What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop and Al. My name is Max and today we are taking a look at this which is the new Porsche 911 Carrera GTS. This has always historically been the one to have. It is a combination of the most popular options, some black stuff around the car, a little more power and a bit more money. That is basically the GTS in a nutshell, but it has historically been the one to have. It has always been this super cool combination of, you know, the best parts somewhere in the middle of the lineup for a relatively interesting price. So today I'm going to find out if that is the case with this new 992 as well. So I'm going to show you around it. I'm going to show you the spec. We're going to talk about the things you get on a GTS and then we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn Blast. So we've got a, a Python green car today which I do think looks pretty cool. It kind of works especially with all the black stuff as I said you get on a GTS like all the accents in the front bumper the little splitter here is in black as well. I always think that if you go for a GTS it should be in a lighter color to to get that nice contrast with the black stuff. The GTS also gets these smoked lights at the front and at the rear, so it does look a bit more angry than a regular 992. But there are some more important things you get on a GTS. As I said, it is somewhere in the middle of the lineup but of course with that increase in price they have to offer you something else as well so what do we have we've got the wheels brakes springs and dampers from a porsche 911 turbo so that means that the handling has drastically improved uh, compared to a carrera s so these turbo wheels with the center locks are absolutely stunning behind that we've got the steel brakes from the turbo the stock ones uh, carbon ceramics are optional of course and we've got this Pirelli P0 rubber wrapped around that these are 20s at the front 21s at the rear as I said we've got the dampers and the springs as well from the turbo and that means that at the rear you get a second helper spring that keeps the pressure on the primary one and that should help with keeping the wheel on the ground with uh, you know some more spirited driving but it is cool to see that you do get some turbo goodies uh, we've also got black mirror caps here for the gts and black side skirts a little logo there but also interestingly we get lighter glass on the sides and on the rear because this car has been fitted with the optional lightweight package which is new and it saves 25 kilos by installing new seats so we've got these one-piece carbon buckets for the lightweight package we've also got a rear seat delete as you can see less sound deadening uh, insulation in the interior so the gts has that as standard less insulation to you know let in the sound a little bit more but the lightweight package adds on to that so even more insulation is removed we've also got the lighter battery some underbody aero I can actually show you guys because we've got a very cool spec sheet here so this is a nice little book with the spec of the car and all the options we normally don't get that but this is very handy and so this is all the standard for the uh, GTS so you also get the Porsche torque vectoring plus on the GTS the sport chrono package the sport suspension so the PASM which is 10 millimeters lower you get the PDK 8 speed okay blah 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 brakes rear wheel drive engine and then this is all standard equipment okay python green and then we've got the lightweight package so the bucket seats lightweight and noise cancelling glazing including privacy reduced insulation as i said lightweight battery underbody paneling and you get rear axle steering so rear wheel steering is added with the lightweight package which i don't really understand because i would think that that adds weight <laughs> um which is kind of strange for a lightweight package but apparently th they work together i don't i don't know what is happening i mean it is a great option to have the rear wheel steering because it makes the car very agile but 
it's strange that you add it in a package that's supposed to reduce weight. So it would be interesting to know how much weight it actually adds, the four-wheel steering. Anyway, um, we've got the sports exhaust as well. I think this rear bumper is for the GTS as well with this little fin here. I've, I don't think I've seen that before on a Carrera S. Looks very cool. And then this panel right here is in black as well for the GTS. The lettering is black. Black sports exhaust, as I said. Matt, it is such a handsome car, the 992. I really love it. Going to show you this again. Nothing there. Three liter GTS. Little fan on both sides and that's it. Can't see the engine anymore. So it is the same three liter boxer twin turbo setup that you get in a Carrera S but with 30 horsepower extra. So we've got 480 horsepower and 570 newton meters of torque. And on the interior we've got a lot of Alcantara that Porsche calls race tags on the steering wheel, on the door panels as well. We've got a GTS logo on the door sill. A lot of Alcantara actually there as well. And then the rear seat delete. As I said, a GTS with a lightweight package is more, you know, a nod towards the GT3 than it is a nod towards the turbo. It used to be halfway between a turbo and a, and a regular Carrera S, but now I would say it's more halfway between a Carrera S and a GT3 because it has that same feeling, that same naturally aspirated feeling. I know that it's not, but it's amazing how Porsche have been able to replicate that feeling in the 992. Let's take it for a drive because that is what this car is all about, of course. Oh, we've got nice Porsche there as well. It is a very nice spec, this. I quite like it. So you do get a lot of stuff on the GTS, which is very nice. Normally at Porsche, everything is optional, as you know. Okay. Boom, Sport Plus, manual. Little tunnel. That is a good sound. So, on this car, I feel like inside you have the feeling that you've got that howling, that howling sound, that, that naturally aspirated Porsche sound. But on the outside, it's actually not that loud. It's more because you have all that insulation removed that the, the sound is penetrating the cabin more and that is why it feels even more howling and, and, and intense than a Carrera S I should say it's more intense and it's just amazing how they have been able to to make you feel like you're driving a naturally aspirated car it is uncanny but of course you also have the torque from the turbo, so it is a very, very good drive train. Oh man, it's very, very satisfying. It just hits the spot. I don't know what they have done, but it is friggin' magic. So, suspension wise, we are in uh, Sport Plus right now, but I can also put the chassis back into normal and the cool thing about having turbo suspension on this car is that it, it, it's not that jiggly super firm hard GT3 idea it's more flowing and it, it absorbs bumps in the road so well and so it is much more suited for fast b-road driving especially in countries uh, that have like less perfect b-roads like the UK this car would be much easier and I think much more fun to drive fast because a GT3 can feel a bit too hard. And this just absorbs everything so well. Oh! So 
nice. So it also raises the question, you know, if you go for a Carrera S or this, this is in the Netherlands, it's 20,000 euros more expensive, I believe. But as I showed you earlier, you do get a lot of stuff on this car as standard that you don't get on a Carrera S as standard. So in the real world, when you start specking it, a Carrera S is much closer to this than you would think looking at the, the pricing. So it raises the question of why would you buy a Carrera S? And it also gives even more focus and, well, interest, on my part at least, towards the regular Carrera. Because now, if you compare that to this, that is a lot cheaper, a lot. So I think that's also pretty interesting. Okay, at the Autobahn. Oh, those last 500 RPM, that, that top end, it sounds so great. Now, it is Friday today, and that means that it's usually quite busy. So we'll have to see whether we can do anything fun, but uh, top speed of this car is 311 kilometers an hour. So let's put the dampers back in normal. It's amazing how the sound changes at the top end. Really, really cool. So 100 to 200, of course, we measured that, uh, which was 7.65, which is about one and a half tenths quicker than a Carrera S and about two tenths slower than a GT3. So it is right in the middle there as well. Uh, 7.65 is quite respectable. Of course, you've got 30 horsepower extra, 25 kilos less than a Carrera S. So you would maybe expect the difference to be a bit more, but if you look at the 0 to 250 measurements we did, this car did an 18.86, and it's about a second quicker than a Carrera S from 0 to 250. So that is a, a good difference. Uh, if you ask me. So, you know, again, it sits right in between the GT3 and the Carrera S. It is just the middle of the road in a good way. But is it the Goldilocks of the range? I'm not sure. Yes, it's a very impressive car. But I keep gravitating towards that Carrera more and more. I, I just I just love the, the, the basic 992. And I think if you look at value for money, you know you get a lot more stuff in this car, but I think the Carrera might be the best value for money because it's just so damn good. All right, so we're going to turn around here and I'm going to show you the launch control as well. Zero to 100, 3.4 seconds, which if I'm not mistaken is the same as a 992 GT3. And it is rather impressive, as it usually is with Porsche launch controls. Okay, so, Sport Plus, foot on the brake, full throttle. <laughs> 5,000 RPM. Man, man, man. New message? No thanks. Here we go. So, also 
also because of these seats. It feels like like a GT3 light basically, like a GT3 touring for every day. Which is quite a nice concept, you know, to have a sort of a semi a semi hardcore car which Logically speaking, it would just be a core car because semi hardcore is not really hardcore anymore, but it just feels like that with that Alcantara steering wheel with the rear seat delete, the sound that's so much lighter, the one piece bucket seats. It just feels like that. It feels like a, a less hardcore GT3 for the road and to, to drive daily as well because it's it's so comfy those turbo dampers are freaking magic oh it is such a joy to drive and i have to say that porsche are on fire lately i mean it, basically everything they are putting out is awesome and it just makes sense to me they just released that new sport classic the 911 sport classic with a turbo drivetrain a manual gearbox rear wheel drive i mean that is a freaking gem of a car as well they are just nailing it at the moment if you ask me and it is really nice to see i still would love to have a 992 as a daily driver and yes if I had to buy it with my own money, I would buy a Carrera. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just, I'm not as blown away by this car as I was expecting. And it is still an amazing car, value for money. You do get a lot of stuff on a GTS and the driving experience is a bit more exciting, a bit more intense than a regular Carrera or Carrera S because of that that sound deadening, but the lightweight package with the rear seat delete, I mean, I would want to have it because it's cool, but you also sacrifice a bit of practicality and I'm not sure I would be willing to do that. Anyway, that's my two cents. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. You can also check out this video on the right if you want to watch another one. Or if you want to watch a lot more, you can check out the playlist on the left. See you at the next one, guys. Bye.